Ladies and gentlemen, Curry's, Curry's newest alum, Dr. Mike Sheehan. Thank you, President Quigley. Uh, yes. <laughs> Ken, if you could get someone from Buildings and Grounds to turn up the heat a little bit. <laughs> that would be spectacular. <laughs> Ken Quigley, who presides over Curry College, trustees who preside over Ken, Administrators who bring the highest of standards to the college, faculty members who generously share a lifetime of knowledge and experience with Curry students, parents who have sacrificed more than you'll ever know to educate their sons and daughters, relatives and friends. Thank you for your attention today. And thank you for all you have done to support the 650 men and women before us who will walk up this side of the stage as Curry College students and walk down that side, or is it the opposite, as proud Curry College alumni, as the class of MMXV, for those of you who took Latin. I did not, I just used the Roman numeral converter on my iPhone. <laughs> what a glorious morning to be in Milton, Massachusetts. As Ken mentioned, I grew up a few miles from here in Weymouth, and I'll never forget what the kids from Milton used to call us. <laughs> Trespasses. <laughs> Who clapped at that? <laughs> About a month ago, I received an interview request from Matthew Weddleton, a Curry College freshman who was writing an article about this year's commencement for the student newspaper, The Courier Times. Given the fact that I was once editor of my college newspaper, I was happy to be interviewed. Matthew was kind enough to send along ahead of time 10 questions he wanted to ask me. Allow me to go right to question number 10, and I quote, looking back on your past two commencement speeches, a lot appears to be the same. Do you plan on dusting off your old addresses? <laughs> or do you plan to start from scratch? Let me tell you, there's nothing like being the CEO of a newspaper and being put in your place, <laughs> quite appropriately, by a student journalist from the class of 2018, no less. I know you all came here today to hear my greatest hits, but thanks to Matthew, I'm only gonna play tunes from my mo most recent album. <laughs> this is my fourth college degree, three honorary and a Bachelor of Arts in English from the Stanford of the East, the Oxford of New England, St. Anselm College. <laughs> that wasn't a joke. <laughs> but this is the only degree for which I actually had to do some homework. When I look over the graduating class, I really want to see you all as individuals. Instead, I see a sea of black. Could this particular tradition of academia, the commencement ceremony, do any more to make us all look exactly the same? To the untrained eye, there's no difference between me and the captain of the Curry cheerleading squad, <laughs> except when I take my cap off, and then I look like the captain of the cheerleading squad's great-grandfather. But despite the appearance of homogeneity, and despite pressure from all corners of society to conform to a norm, please never forget that you are your own person. You are your own soul. And if you remember a single thing from my remarks this morning, and trust me, you probably won't, it's my wish that you continue to go through life being yourself, comfortable in your own skin, defining success on your terms, laying your head in the pillow each night, feeling good about who you are. And I say this with a full admission that I spent 30 years of my life as a creative director and leader of an advertising agency, doing my best to influence you to buy products you frankly don't really need, or to do things that perhaps you shouldn't. I've been backstage, I've pulled all the strings, 
I've created ad campaigns for hundreds of companies. Merit Cigarettes, McDonald's, Dunkin' Donuts, to name a few. Now, I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. I haven't eaten a Big Mac since I was 17. And I haven't had a cup of Dunkin' Donuts since, well, 7.30 this morning. <laughs> There's an exception to every rule. But anyway, just because you feel pressure from mass media, social media, and so-called role models of pop culture to think, eat, drink, dress, and behave in a particular way, there is much success and great satisfaction in simply being yourself. When I reflect on the people in my life who have, who have influenced me the most, who have made me, for better or worse, the person that I am, I think of my very first boss, my grandfather, Fred Sheehan. I was seven years old, and Papa, as we called him, would pick me up at 7 a.m. every Saturday morning in his maroon Rambler American. In 1967, nothing said, I'm from Weymouth, more than driving around in your grandfather's Rambler. <laughs> and the maroon color was not a factory option. He painted it with house paint, a bucket <laughs> and a brush. Anyway, we'd drive to the Quincy Savings Bank branch in South Quincy, across from the Adams homes, where he was the custodian, and I would help him clean it for one dollar a week. One morning after I had cleaned the windows to my satisfaction, he brought me over and showed me the fingerprints that I had missed. And he said something to me that I've never forgotten. He said, if you're, gonna, if you're not going to do the job right, don't do the job. By age seven, I had learned everything I ever needed to know about the value of hard work. And now, when I walk into that branch, it's not as a custodian. That branch is owned by South Shore Bank, and I serve on the bank's board of directors. Another value I learned at a young age was financial responsibility. When I was in my early teens and I could be trusted with gas-powered machinery, I mowed my grandmother's lawn, my grandmother on my mother's side. And I was climbing the corporate ladder. That was for $3 a week, <laughs> a triple. Every time she paid me, she said the same thing. She said, your best friend in the world is money in the bank. And I had no idea what she meant by that. But when she handed me those three singles every week, I considered that advice a pay stub. Your best friend in the world is money in the bank. Before she passed away in 1979, I asked her what the heck she meant by that. It's simple, she said. Don't spend your money. Save it. Now, I'm not that bright. But that part I understood. What was the bit about the best friend? She said, your best friend, that's your freedom. That's having no debt and squirreling away enough money in the bank so you can do whatever you want to do. That's never being owned by your boss or your job or your career or your mortgage company. There is only one reason to work so hard, and that's to be free. I wish she was alive today so she could see how much she influenced me. Those are two important values, hard work and financial prudence, but they're nothing without integrity. While I was in college, I worked nights and weekends in the library of the Boston Globe. When I got home from work one night, I emptied out my pockets on the kitchen counter, and there was a pencil with a Globe logo on it. My mother asked me where I got the pencil. I told her I got it at work. You stole that, she said. So I didn't steal it. It was in my pocket when I left the office. Well, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to them. And if you're OK walking away with a pencil, what makes you think it stops there? She may have been strident and a bit irrational. And trust me, at 81, she hasn't changed all that much. <laughs> but you know what? She was not wrong. Lack of integrity begins with bending the rules and it inevitably leads to breaking the rules. How deeply did that lecture in integrity affect me? You be the judge. I'm CEO of the Boston Globe now, and I still check my pockets every time before I leave the office. <laughs> I can say without reservation that any success I have achieved in life, which, by the way, is dwarfed by the success of many of you here today, including my fellow honorary degree recipients, has very little to do with my intellect or my talent. 
but it has everything to do with the values I learned by listening to or observing the behavior of those closest to me. You see, the best role models aren't necessarily professional athletes or business leaders or politicians or pop, pop culture phenomena. The best role models are the folks who are here with you today. They're your parents, your grandparents, your siblings, an aunt and uncle, perhaps a cousin or a good friend. They have already given you everything you need to be successful in life, which are your values. Now this is where I have a confession to make. I plagiarized the concept for this address. That's quite a confession for someone who's a CEO of a newspaper, particularly in an academic environment. But I hope you'll forgive me because I plagiarized from you, the Curry College class of 2015. A few months ago, I asked for copies of the essays you wrote when you applied to Curry. And the college provided me with a number of them, completely anonymized. You were asked to tell a story of a person who had significant influence on your life. In your words, I read of a father who came here from a foreign country with $100 in his pocket, not knowing a single word of English, working tirelessly to make sure his family could live the life he didn't have as a child. A quote from that letter, nothing in life is given to you. You have to earn it, the father said. Of another father, who influenced his son with this quote, it is not your aptitude, but your attitude that will determine your altitude. Of an aunt and uncle who demonstrated by how they lived how to overcome adversity. Here's a quote from that essay. My aunt and uncle have not made millions and they may not have changed the world, but they have changed my life and the lives of everyone who has taken the opportunity to get to know them. Of a selfless mom who overcame breast cancer, a cousin who died tragically and far too young, but who lived life to the fullest. A grandfather who never missed a school play or a sporting event. Another grandfather who drove one of you to and from school every day, from preschool through high school. A younger brother who flourished despite having a number of serious surgeries beginning in infancy. Four years ago, when you were seniors in high school, those were the people who inspired you. They were your role models. From them, you inherited the values that will make you successful in life. I hope and I pray that you still believe what you wrote four years ago. If you do, when you leave here, make sure you thank them for being your inspiration. There was so much love in those essays, make sure they know how much you love them. And take everything you've learned here at Curry College, whether it be in the classroom, or the laboratory, or the playing field, or just hanging around with your friends, and run with it. Grow, expand, challenge yourself. Never stop learning, and never stop loving. But most of all, please never change. With that, I go back to Matthew Weddleton's questions. I already shared with you question number one, question number 10. So here is question number one. What are you most looking forward to when you think about com coming to Curry College and deliver the commencement address? This one's easy, the end. <laughs> they don't always dance.